Hi and welcome to the free info channel where we discuss interesting aspects of real estate around the world and today we will examine the real estate market in Denmark. Stay tuned till the end where we will share expert advice from local investors. All right, back in the early 2000s, the national average house prices increased by 63.6% between 2003 and 2007. After having peaked in the second quarter of 2007, the prices were soon to take a downfall due to the global financial crisis. Prices hit an absolute low in 2009 and the market has improved gradually year by year since then. However, many remote regions struggle with excess supply and decreasing demand. Now, if you are not a Danish citizen, you need to know that although Denmark is a liberal country, the Danish real estate market is not open to everybody. If you are not an EU national or the holder of a residence permit, the market will not be easy to enter. Additionally, there are some special restrictions on foreign ownership in certain areas, especially when buying summer holiday homes. Moving on to the structure of the property market. As you see here, the vast majority of Danish properties are categorized as single-family houses followed almost equally by townhouses and apartments. Recent statistics show that 88% of the Danish population reside in urban or suburban areas. The capital of Denmark, Copenhagen, is the center of urbanization with just under 800,000 people, which no other Danish city comes close to. But with a total population of 5.8 million, Denmark remains a small country. Now in Denmark, the overall ownership rate, that is the percentage of people living in a property that they own themselves, was 60.5% in early 2019, which is a little lower than the Euro average of 66%. The mortgage situation in Denmark is categorized as robust by international experts as it is balanced and transparent. Borrowers are currently benefiting from very low, even negative interest rates. Now, one important and key aspect of the Danish real estate market is the frequency of housing cooperatives. In a Danish context, being a part of a housing cooperative means that an individual pays a certain amount of money to the association behind the cooperative in order to gain the right to inhabit the property in question. And then in addition, one must pay a monthly fee, much like rent. The beginning of this housing scheme dates back to the mid 1800s and arose as an answer to the overpopulated and expensive living options, which was a problem for the working class living in the city. The housing cooperative solution ensures affordable housing and stable rent, and this model remains popular today. These days, it is possible to find inexpensive properties in the outmost regions of Denmark. The problem here revolves around a decreasing population as many jobs have moved to the city. As a result, many banks are reluctant to issue mortgages in these regions. In other words, fewer people are interested in purchasing a home and the banks can make it difficult for the ones that are interested. The government has tried to address this issue by moving certain government offices and other public establishments to other parts of the country than Copenhagen and hereby moving the jobs to these regions. Now, let's have a look at a successful investor who has employed a strategy of investing in inexpensive apartments far from the city, and this is Danish Casper. He is 33 years old and currently owns 14 apartments in the southern part of Sealand. All of his apartments were priced under 50,000 euros, and he expects to become financially independent when he reaches 30 properties of the same kind. His strategy is to always have tenants and he does not depend on the real estate market to increase in price. I will leave a link to his blog in the description of this video if you want to learn more about his successful property venture. Over the past couple of years, foreign investors have been looking towards Copenhagen. Why? First of all, because Denmark has a stable economy and the citizens of Denmark have high purchasing power on average. Secondly, investors have begun to use a particular law to their advantage. Although Denmark has a somewhat strict rent control system, it is legal to raise the rent if one performs extensive renovations. This has caused international investment firms such as Blackstone to invest heavily. This has created controversy as they have raised the rent one of three times in some cases, and the Danish government has been forced by popular demand to look into avoiding this in the future. In recent years, the market for vacation rentals has been looking more and more lucrative. More people rent Danish beach houses all year round. This makes many families able to invest in a second home, a vacation home, since they can rent it out when not using it themselves. During a warm Danish summer, many will stay in Denmark and rent a holiday house instead of going to, for example, Southern Europe. 
For the most part, buying a property in Denmark is a safe choice. When a property is put up for sale, a building expert will examine the property and make a report on any damages. The buyer can then take out a change of ownership insurance, which will cover if damages turn up that are not listed in the report. This is not a mandatory activity in Denmark, but common practice. If you're thinking of buying a property in Denmark, you do need to analyze the geographical area closely as there are big differences nationally but also regionally. And even two villages not far apart can turn out to have a very different profile and demographic characteristics. Now, if you want to buy a property and use it as a rental, you need to know that all tenants are protected under the Danish Rental Act, and unless otherwise specified in the contract, these are the rules to follow. If you want to use your property as a rental, make sure to study the rules and account for taxes. This is also the case if you use a partner such as Airbnb. It is worth noting that if you only generate a limited amount of rent money yearly, this is tax-free, however, it is also worth noting that Denmark isn't in the low end when it comes to taxes in general. Alright, this was the topic for today. Don't forget to like the video, leave a comment, and subscribe to the channel. Thank you, bye!